of the Municipal Act. Uh, Council was provided with an update concerning uh, ongoing negotiations as it relates to a proposed land transaction uh, between the town and another party. Uh, the town's still subject to confidentiality obligations at this time, but it is expected that more details will be made public uh, at, at the first meeting or the second meeting in October. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, with that said, we have, uh, do we have any declarations of conflict of interest? And I see none. Thank you. Um, I'm looking for an adoption of the published agenda. We do have an addition. Mr. Oje, could you tell us what that addition is? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Councillor Bjorkman has asked for an item to be added to new business this evening. Uh, it pertains to a letter of support for the Western Lake Erie National Marine Conservation Area proposal. Uh, the details of that uh, were provided to Council earlier, and it's, it's a request to be added uh, subject to your Chair's discretion. Okay, so I'm looking for a motion to receive the agenda. Councillor Vokes and Councillor Rogers, all in favor? Oh, sorry, uh, I've got a question here first. Councillor Bondi. Thank you uh, to the Chair. Uh, can I remove 15.1.2 uh, and add it to the next Council meeting? And I also have a notice of motion on CIPs for uh, retail vitalization as well later. Thank you. So uh, all in favor of the agenda with those additions and subtractions. That's carried, thank you. Uh, on to adoption of the minutes of a regular council meeting uh, from September the 4th. Moved by Councillor Bondi, supported by Councillor Vokes. All in favor, that's carried. Uh, special meeting minutes from September the 4th. Moved by Councillor Vokes and, and Councillor Snively. All in favor, that's carried. A special council meeting minutes from September the 11th, moved by Councillor Bondi and supported by Councillor Bjorkman. All in favor? That's carried. Thank you. And we have one public presentation this evening, and that is from Stantec Consulting. And um, uh, Dr. Lee. This evening. Oh, uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, you can do, you will do the, from the second chapter to finish your appointment. Um, so uh, today, I just uh, give, uh, like to give uh, a highlight of uh, um, on the uh, town's uh, direction of town's administration, uh, what uh, have done on uh, Essex Ward One sanitary and stone sewer system, or mainly including study and improvement we have done since uh, January 2015. So the uh, highlight of the presentation, including the uh, introduction, uh, then uh, will be a, a highlight uh, sanitary sewer and uh, uh, sanitary sewer study and improvement, as well as a stormwater uh, study improvement. And then uh, talk about the benefit of uh, sewer study on planning and uh, uh, development. Uh, at the end, there will be uh, the closer uh, comments from the town administration. So, um, as uh, many of you are aware of that, the Essex sewer, World One system will be uh, a separate sewer system. It's uh, as shown on the slide. There's a two uh, pipe uh, that uh, the the blue one. It's uh, uh, stone sewer, so basically the collector conveys rainwater to water courses, which outlet to the water bodies that drains the Detroit River. In this case, would be Detroit River and the Sinclair Beach, uh, Sinclair Lake. Then the sanitary sewer system is in that uh, the yellow, light yellow, that be collect and uh, conveys the sanitary sewage to the treatment facility, then discharge to the uh, water bodies after treatment. 
So um, in uh, recent years, uh, the, the town has exper uh, uh, experienced uh, uh, basement flooding event, uh, especially on uh, August uh, 11, 2014, and September 5, uh, 5, 2015. So um, that uh, the main reason, cause of basement flooding, there's uh, two reasons. One is the climate changes. So in recent years, increasing rainfall in the region uh, have uh, uh, a significant impact on municipal sewer system. And also that uh, because that, uh, the, that will be f uh, significant amount of uh, stone water poured on the town street that will be runoff, that will be significantly <coughs> increase the volume of stone water into the town's stone and the sanitary sewer system that causing a street and a basement flooding. The reason is because, the, and the second reason is the aging uh, stone and the sanitary sewer system that significantly inflow and infiltrate into that sewer system. Uh, also, there's a uh, local drain uh, sewers, stone sewers, is uh, designed for two years uh, uh, rainfall event, so that uh, obviously cannot uh, accommodate that uh, uh, severe uh, stone event. So uh, this is also is not uh, that uh, um, this is a regional where uh, not only uh, town of Essex, other municipality around Essex uh, experience the same. Uh, uh, problem that uh, has uh, it's this is a uh, regional uh, issues so um, the solution to basement and uh, street flooding so uh, under that direction of towns administration uh, a series of study on sanitary and the stone uh, sewer system has been uh, conducted and also uh, improvement to uh, sanitary sewer system has also completed so the next uh, one, I will let Mike uh, to uh, complete that uh, the rest of the presentation. Okay, the sanitary sewer study and improvements. Okay, the Essex Sanitary Sewer Systems roughly, um, roughly contains two separate sewer sheds. The first being the Northeast Lagoon Sewer Shed. So that's the one shown in, in green over here. Generally, sewage or wastewater on the north side of Talbot Street flows northeasterly to this point where I'm pointing at right here, to a pumping station which then lifts the sewage into the Northeast Lagoon Treatment Facility. The second service area in the town of Essex is the Essex plant service area. So that is the area shown in blue here. Generally, uh, wastewater on, or, uh, houses on the south side of Talbot Street flow westerly and southerly till it reaches the Essex plant pumping station here where it pumps it up for treatment and uh, ultimate discharge into the water course. So a chronology of events. Since uh, Stantec really got involved in this was about January 2015. The town initiated a series of sanitary and storm sewer projects to address basement flooding issues. From January to September, um, we conducted a bunch of field investigations, the first one being the flow monitoring to identify areas of, of rainwater or II entering the sewer system and collect data for sewer modeling. The second being manhole inspections. There's about 500 manholes, sanitary manholes in the town of Essex. We inspected all of them to see if there were any defects with them. And the third being the sewer camera work and smoke testing. So camera work involves putting a camera down the sewer pipes to see if there's any leaks or defects in the pipes. And smoke testing generally uh, involves blowing smoke into the sewer system to see if there's any cross connections. We did about six kilometers worth of, of sewer of this work. In September 2015, about three years ago today, we, we were here at council and we um, presented the results of our study in our modeling. So the result that the sanitary basement flooding was caused from excessive rainwater entering the sewer system. The reason um, <coughs> being primarily that there were some leaks in the sewer system, but the majority of the water was coming from private cross connections. 
The proposed improvement ultimately at that time was to increase the capacity of the sanitary sewer system, so meaning essentially we're allowing the water to come in and we're pumping it out as quickly as we can possibly pump it out so that the, the, the water level doesn't rise and get to the level of people's basements and flood back into their basements. In 2016 to 2017, uh, the proposed improvement was implemented. It was constructed for about a cost of $5 million. And sewer repairs based on the, on the camera work and the smoke testing and the manhole inspections that we completed between January to September were completed. As well as um, introducing some, we call inflow inserts or pans into the manholes to mitigate rainwater getting into the sanitary sewer system. And that cost about $75,000. So the field investigations, like I said, involved inspecting of 500 manholes, the purpose being to inspect for leaks. The sewers were cameraed about six kilometers to invest for defects and cross connections between the storm and sanitary. And updated the, uh, the town's GIS interactive mapping. So the, the interactive mapping is, is generally, um, each town, each municipality has one. They keep records of their sewers and, and other underground infrastructure. So some of those records were aging a little bit, so we had, we had updated them based on our um, field investigations. These are some of the manholes that we found that were leaking. These are some of the, the worst ones. The majority of them um, were much better than this. Um, that were found leaking and that were end, ultimately end up repaired so that they were more watertight. The video and smoke testing, this picture here, figure 2A, just shows a camera going down the sewer. That just kind of gives you an idea of what, what the machine looks like. It's, it's a little instrument on wheels, or, or it can also float in the sewage. And it can camera the pipe, and you can see the inside of the pipe to see if, it's, if it, there's any defects in it. Figure B here shows um, results from some smoke testing. So this is, a, this is just a sanitary clean-out that, that either had a damaged cap or a missing clean out cap so rainwater could enter from the surface directly through this open pipe into the sanitary sewer system. And figure C here shows, um, shows a, a, uh, a drain, a grate right there that's, that's connected to the sanitary sewer system. It should be connected to the storm sewer system. So rainwater in, in this person's property would, would drain towards that drain and then would go right into the sanitary whereas, whereas it should be going into the storm sewer system. So the sanitary model was built, two systems, like I said, the Essex plant system and the uh, Northeast Lagoon system. And the model was calibrated with flow monitoring data used, it, um, used that I discussed previously. And ultimately, what came from this model was the proposed improvement. So the improvements approach was, like I said, to remove the excessive uh, I.I. Or, or rainwater from the sanitary system and store it at the treatment plant. The improvements involved a wet weather pumping station at pumping station number three, discharging directly to the plant. So this is uh, right on Fairview, kind of between the, the soccer fields and the baseball diamonds. A wet weather flow storage at the plant using uh, decommissioned lagoons, and then a large sewer along Bryan Avenue East. These are just some photos of the, of the new works that were built. So this is the pumping station right here. Uh, a new generator and electrical building to house electrical equipment. This is uh, that black piece of pipe right there is the force main that was installed along from pumping station number three all the way to the treatment plant to, to pump sewage out under high flow conditions. So the repairs that were completed, that was, this was generally the, the construction project, the improvements overall, the $5 million improvements. These are the roughly $75,000 worth of repairs. So there are four types of repairs here. And the main purpose, like I said, was to mitigate rainwater from entering the sanitary sewer system. The first was the inf these inflow inserts or pans. So if you look here at figure five, you can see one of these pans. It, it essentially is just a roughly a, a plastic pan with a rubber gasket on the bottom of it. And it sits in between the manhole frame and, and the manhole cover, the manhole cover goes on top, and that manhole cover compresses the gasket and forms a watertight seal. So it doesn't allow any rainwater from, from the road surface to uh, enter into the sanitary sewer system. Approximately 120 of those pans were installed in the 500 manholes in the town. This is one of those manholes that were found to be leaking. So ultimately these were repaired. 
This photo here just shows a, a worker injecting the uh, spots that were leaking on the manhole with a polyurethane compound. It reacts with the water and, um, and kind of seals up any cracks in the manhole that, that were found to be leaking. <coughs> The third type of repair is, is the repair on the actual sewer or the pipeline itself. So this kind of roughly shows a, a photo of, of a, a pipe that either has some cracks into or roots penetrating through it. So meaning if there's cracks in the pipe or roots penetrating into it, the groundwater can get in the pipe. So this is after. So the, the pipe would be lined <coughs> and so that the, uh, the uh, cracks in the, in the outside of the pipe wouldn't, uh, wouldn't have any water penetrating into the inside of the pipe. The last type of repair, gen mostly private sewer repairs on private property. These involve uh, the majority of them either clean outs or cross connections. So this just shows here in, in figure 10, a clean out cap that was missing or damaged and you can see smoke coming out of it. And then this just shows after the repair is made, a new cap was on there with a watertight seal so that rainwater couldn't enter into the, into the top of that pipe. <coughs> One of the other things that was introduced in, uh, in the end of 2015 was this basement flooding subsidy program. Now this is, um, other municipalities have had this and it's a really great program. It, all it really does is it gives residents incentive to protect really their own private property and also contribute to the reduction in stormwater entering the system. So overall improving the system's performance. So the town's implemented this in 2015 and there's different um, incentives that they have out there installing backwater bottles or sub pumps or, or, um, or disconnecting foundation drains. This was something that was initiated and kind of another little small but necessary step to kind of get the private side involved and, and help them um, prevent them from flooding at the same time and also reduces the rainwater going to the sanitary system. So the storm sewer system. The storm sewer system in Essex is um, a little bit more complicated than the sanitary system. It's consisted of five catchments shown there over two watersheds. So the first watershed is the Puce River watershed and this generally is the, the area in blue, the Maidstone catchment, the Maidstone Ave drainage area and the Hobgood Avenue drainage, and the Hobgood Street drainage area which is the area in yellow. This line kind of separates the two watersheds along Talbot Street again. So generally the area in blue and the area in, um, in yellow drain to the Puce River and flow northerly to, the, uh, to Lake St. Clair. The three catchments in the bottom, the one in pink, the Rush catchment, the one in green, the, the um, South Talbot catchment, and the one in yellow, the Iron Town Line catchment, all are part of the Cunard River subwatershed. And ultimately, all the, the runoff in these catchments flows to the Cunard River, which heads westerly and discharges out into the Detroit River. This just kind of shows a, a little bigger map of the county. And you can see the Puce River subwatershed ultimately uh, outlets into municipal drains, which then end up at the Puce River, which flows northerly up to Lake St. Clair. Likewise, the three catchments south of uh, Talbot Street outland municipal drains, which ultimately end up at Kennard River, and then which, uh, which flows out to the Detroit River on the west side of the screen. So the chronology of events for the storm sewer system. In October 2015, like I talked about, the town initiated the basement flooding protection subsidy program. In 2016, uh, field investigations were completed similar to what was completed for the sanitary sewer system. So, so flow monitoring was used to collect data for the storm system modeling. Manholes were inspected, a, approximately four, 400 of them. Main purpose being to construct the storm model, but also when we were out there taking a look to see if there are any defects in the manholes. And sewer camera work, about almost two kilometers worth of sewer, storm sewer was cameraed to, uh, to inspect for potential defects. From 2015 to, to roughly a few months ago, July 2018, we had built a storm drainage model um, to evaluate the system up for future development and to, to evaluate its, its current performance. May 2017 to present, um, the town issued a municipal class environmental improvement to the South Talbot catchment uh, storm drainage system. So that is 
this area in green, which is one of the more heavily populated areas in the Essex Urban Centre. The purpose being to reduce the risk of flooding and property damage and evaluate the system to ensure infrastructure is in place for full future development of that catchment. So the field investigations, like I said, uh, first to inspect the, the sewers were video inspected, almost about two kilometers of them. And the purpose being to find any defects in, this, in the storm sewers. And then the, the interactive mapping that the town has of their sewer system was updated based on our field investigations. The hydraulic modeling, the purpose really of the hydraulic modeling for the storm system, so like I said, we did this for the sanitary system, but we're doing it again for the storm, was to reduce the risks of flooding and property damage during significant storm events, so, so storms say above two inches in rainfall. The long-term objectives was to provide storm infrastructure, one, for full future development within the catchment, and to provide a, a model for reviewing impact of future developments on the existing stormwater drainage system. The storm system is a little bit different than the sanitary system in that it's much more complicated. The water essentially discharges to, to the municipal drains, which then outlet into natural water courses, which, for example, River Canard flows another 25, 30 kilometers downstream before it hits the... Um, before it hits the, uh, its discharge point into the lake. The sanitary sewer system essentially ends at the treatment plant. So there's lots of things downstream that can impact the storm sewer system. It's, it's a much more complicated system than the sanitary system. So this is just a, a rough picture of the storm sewer model that was built. You can see the five catchments uh, there highlighted. So the benefits of the, of the sewer study on planning and development, and I, I guess how Essex now, three years later, is better prepared today um, for extreme storm events than they were previously. <clears throat> so the integrated GS and interactive map. We updated the interactive, uh, the interactive map. The storm sewer system's a lot older than the sanitary system. It has many drainage tiles that were, inst that were installed um, over the years as the town was built. The sanitary sewer system was relatively constructed the majority of it in the 1980s, so it's not quite as old as the storm system. So as a result, some of the records um, aren't, aren't quite as accurate. So uh, m most of the time was spent updating these records, one, because uh, it helps with planning decisions, and two, we, we need accurate records in order to, to build our hydraulic model. This just shows um, the manual inspections that we did on the sanitary sewer system. So these been, have, have been linked to the town's interactive map. So now that they can click any manhole within the town, and the manhole inspection report comes up for it, it tells it the condition of the manhole, and you can also see photos of the manhole. So that just mainly helps the town in planning. They don't have to go out in the field. They have this nice, unique tool that they can use, um, use in their office. The second is the, the sewer inspections for the camera work that were completed. So all sewers that were inspected um, were cameraed or video inspected. Uh, they were linked to the town's GIS as well. Sometimes what happens with the, with the camera work is, is someone does the camera work and a few years later it's difficult to find the videos. And the town has to pay again to find the videos. In this case, all the camera work has been integrated into the town's interactive map system so that if they click the sewer link, if the, t if the sewer has been cameraed, the video will come up so the town can then review it. So it's kind of a nice, easy place to keep all, all your information rather than, rather than, um, rather than on, on a bookshelf or somewhere where other people may not know. So this ultimately, the sanitary sewer system mapping was updated the town, on the town's GIS to ensure that this, this mainly provides two big benefits. It may not seem significant, but it really is. First, the administration and, ex and external consultants really can make more informed planning and future development decisions. If they're looking at an inter uh, interactive map where there's a few errors on it, it's difficult to, to make an informed, correct decision. When you have an interactive map that's, that has correct uh, information on it, it's much easier to make a more informed decision. This is just showing the exact same thing except for the storm sewer system where the interactive map was updated. So the main benefits for the hydraulic modeling, 
The hydraulic modeling benefits, the main thing with the storm water and the sanitary sewer models, majority of uh, municipalities don't have this tool. It really is a great tool. And a lot of municipalities, especially up in the greater Toronto area, are now turning to these tools. So this tool really allows the town to take the entire sanitary and storm system into consideration for future development reviews. You can review the impact of future developments on the existing storm and sanitary sewer system. Or sorry, yes, you can review the impact of future developments on the storm and sanitary sewer system. Few, few municipalities have hydraulic models for storm and sanitary systems. And without this tool, especially with the storm sewer system, it's very difficult for any engineer uh, to make an informed decision about an impact on future development. Other municipalities in Essex County actually are within the last couple of years uh, have been starting to do the exact same thing that we initiated here back in 2015 to develop the storm and sanitary hydraulic models. There was a, a newspaper article that came out about three weeks ago in the Windsor Star and it highlighted all the great work that's been done in Lakeshore, LaSalle, City of Windsor and Tecumseh and all the money they've, they've spent in, in building these, these sewer models, all the money they've spent in, in the master plans and planning for the future and all the money they spent on new infrastructure. And they've kind of, kind of come after Essex has come. We haven't really got, Essex really hasn't gotten um, as much credit as, 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 pro as probably deserved. So one of the main things, I guess, to note here is, is how important those models are for engineers to make decisions and how, how rare they are for municipalities to have them. The majority of municipalities that have them are up in the greater Toronto area. Very few have them down here. And actually, some of them are, are starting to kind of catch on and build these models. And, and the article from the Windsor Star a few weeks ago um, really spoke to that. And the second was updating their interactive sewer and drainage maps. Like I said, if you don't have inter accurate um, records of your sewers and your drainage maps, it's very difficult to make informed planning decisions. Uh, now I'll just let Chris speak. Uh, some closing comments from town administration. Sure. Uh, thanks, guys. Uh, so uh, I just wanted to kind of wrap up um, what Stantec and what the town have been working on. I thought it was an opportune time with uh, uh, this term coming to a close and when this, with this being initiated within this term and what we've done in these three years. So you've seen what we've done as far as infrastructure work. You've seen that on the ground. You've seen that. Um, you know, it's easy to see. What you haven't seen is a lot of the stuff they talked about today. And, and I think it's really um, vital. We don't, administration typically doesn't pat themselves on the back a lot. This is something where the town um, really needs to um, give themselves some accolades here. What we've done with our stormwater management and our sanitary and, and setting ourselves up with respect to the modeling and having those working models and doing all these investigations and tying it back to our, our GIS system only puts us in a position uh, to succeed in the future. We can, we can pinpoint any development. We can put any scenario within there. We know how it's going to affect both our sanitary and our storm systems. And as Mike alluded to, nobody else has that right now. Uh, in particular, uh, like maybe in the Toronto region, but in my travels uh, through AMO and other conferences, this is something uh, very special here. And very, you know, what we've done the last three years, a lot of municipalities are just starting to do now. Um, it's huge in terms of uh, um, engineering and in terms of development and, and making sure that we're protected and making sure that our existing residents are protected and that our future residents uh, um, will succeed moving forward. So uh, I, I just really wanted to stress that. Uh, in terms of future works, uh, Mike uh, noted that the EA that this council um, approved with respect to the southwest area uh, will be completed this year. Uh, that preferred solution will be coming to council for review and approval very shortly. Um, we want to start to implement phase one. We, we were successful with the NDMP grant that, that uh, we applied for uh, and we'll be putting out some media and a press release on that shortly as well. As well, not just what we've done, where we're going. So we're also committed to do Harrow Center this year, both storm and sanitary. Uh, so again, we'll have that same model, we'll have that same system and that same setup so that any developments that are coming, we know how that's going to affect the system, as well as 
where can we make our improvements? So it gives us that future capital look. What improvements are going to be the most effective? So where are we going to get the best bang for our buck? You know, we're not shooting blind here. We've got the data. We've got the model to show us, you know, by, by improving this sewer, by putting a pump station here, it's going to improve this region and this area uh, for your future and existing residents. Uh, and then we're looking then ahead to next year's budget and, and looking at doing Colchester's sanitary system and ensuring that, that that we know how it's functioning, what its capacity is at, what we can add to it, uh, and again, how those developments will impact that. So we really set ourselves on a, on a positive road. Uh, again, a lot of it's being done in the back rooms and, and you know on the computers and whatnot. And I and I just wanted to highlight that with council and with the residents to know that you know you really have uh, um, done a lot. Uh, both sanitary and storm uh, spent the money and the visions there uh, you know to move forward and, and keep doing it you know we're just going to be better that way thank you mr. Nepsey and uh, we thank uh, Stan Tech for coming out and, and updating us this evening we uh, that's a lot of information for us to take back and I'm sure that uh, you probably have a copy of this for us if we're looking to see uh, see the presentation in the future. So thank you for coming out this evening and, and any questions or comments from uh, council members. So Councilor Bjorkman. Thank you through the chair. Uh, thank you very much for coming out talking to us tonight and highlighting that. Uh, I was just thinking it was it was four years ago that we were I was campaigning and knocking on doors and talking to people about splash pads and 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 parks and they said don't talk to me about that talk to me about my basement. And that's where we were four years ago, and it was we were in the middle of having this um, terrible flooding issue, and and where we've come from from that time uh, is terrific. And I'll touch all the wood I can find. Uh, the the rains have uh, been good to us as well, but uh, it's work that we needed to do. And uh, thank you very much for the time you've put in, and we look forward to the uh, the Harrow project uh, beginning. Thanks. Any further comments, Councillor Bondi? Thank you, Chair Malosh. Just through you to, I, I think, maybe Mr. Nepsey. So in theory, with this hydraulic model, we can look at the Essex Crossing subdivision and, and run numbers and run, I don't know, just say 40-foot lots and 60, 600 homes or 50-foot lots and 400 homes and, and run it through the model and see how it's going to impact our sewer system. Is that, is that the tool that you, is that what we can do with it? Uh, through worship, that is something we can do. It all, you know, obviously things cost money, uh, and when we have a finalized development, depending on um, the scenario that the developer chooses to go with, as far as lot coverage and lot sizes, absolutely, that's something that we lean on Stantec to then to ensure and show us how that's going to affect our system and make sure that everything else is protected, both sanitary and storm. So, mostly yes, but it has to be driven, uh, you know, by the developer. Thank you, and through you, Mr. Mr. Chair, to through to Chris again, and in the consultants, same consultants that are doing the Harrow study, correct? I believe. Is there any update that we have on the on the Harrow study? I see it's listed 2018, 2019. I know we haven't got a lot of rain. That's probably been uh, not good in terms of the study. But is there any update that we can give to the residents in Harrow? Uh, through your worship, uh, as far as uh, updates, the data collection phase has, has obviously started. Uh, the flow monitors are in place now, so we're looking to capture these fall uh, wet weather events. Um, you know, it's one of those where we don't want them, but we kind of need them in order to calibrate the model properly. But, uh, you know, uh, and then following that, the, the model can start to be built and calibrated that way. So um, things are moving. Okay, with that, uh, I'd entertain a motion. Motion to receive. Su supported by uh, Councillor Rogers. And uh, all in favor. It's carried. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen, for coming out this evening. We have no unfinished business this evening. And we're moving on to reports from administration. First report, 8.1, is Planning Report 2018-38. It's in regard to site plan control approval for 1954990 Ontario Incorporated. And it has a bylaw attached to it, number 1744. Support. Moved by Councillor Bondi, supported by Councillor Rogers. Any questions in regard to this uh, 
item. So all in favor? It's carried. Thank you very much. Uh, item 8.2 is Clerk's Report 2018-16, appointment of an election compliance audit committee. And it has a uh, bylaw that goes along with it, 1746, that administration is recommending we move on. Councilor Rogers and Councilor Bjorkman seconded. And this is to uh, appoint Jerry Marion, Lori Brett, and Cheryl Bondi as our members of the Election Compliance Committee, as well as bylaw 1746. All in favor? It's carried. Thank you. An, a next report is 8.3, Chief Administrative Officer. And she's going to be giving us a verbal report on the agreement extension for our animal control services for the town of Essex. Ms. Hunter. Thank you. Through you, Mr. Chair. Um, back a while, we had talked about animal control services and talked about different alternatives. At the end of the day, it was agreed that we go forward with basically what we have now. So we have been over the course of a few months now been working on the tender documents for that agreement. Uh, it is posted right now, but does not close until October 10th. So what we're asking for is to extend the existing contract with Essex County Canine Services on a month-to-month -month basis under the same terms as we now have with them. And as soon as that we're able to bring this forward to Council and get, it, uh, get a new uh, contract in place, we will do that. Councillor Bondi uh, receives and supports. Uh, can I get a seconder? Councillor Snively, uh, any questions? Councillor Rogers, no? Okay. Um, all in favor of the motion? That's carried. Thank you. Uh, Ava, any reports from our uh, youth member? No report for tonight. No re Thank you. No report this evening. And uh, no report from County Council either for this evening. So we're on to correspondence. Uh, we have two items of correspondence to be received. Both are just for informational purposes. Motion by Councillor Bondi and supported by Councillor Bjorkman. Any questions? Councillor Vokes. Yes, thank you, Chair. And in reading of this, in terms of NAFTA, it says uh, uh, the federal oh, government... Oh, sorry, sorry. Not, not that far yet. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were talking. I thought you were receiving both correspondence. No. Oh, okay. The um, so we're receiving Community Schools Alliance. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. the local planning appeal okay. support center. So any further questions on those? All in favor? It's carried. Now we're on to the correspondence to be considered for receipt and support. So we've got uh, Township of Amaranth in regard to NAFTA Dairy Supply Agreement. So Councillor um, Rogers is receiving and supporting. I'll Councillor second. Vokes is uh, uh, seconding. Any comments or questions? Councillor Vokes. Thank you, Chair. Um, it, it, it says here in the, in the correspondence uh, urging the federal government to not allow a foreign party to interfere with our dairy management. What is the foreign party that we're accepting and endorsing? Is, it, is that the, the, the Trump government in terms of NAFTA? Is that what that's saying? I believe so. Because I don't want to, uh, I don't want to get involved with the politics of free trade in terms of the Trump government. He, he'll, he's, he's a strong individual, and it, it, by endorsing this, you you got to be careful what you endorse. You just can't. I'm telling you, people, you just can't be throwing stuff up in the wind and going, "We support it." It's not as it's not as simple as that. So we better make sure what we're doing. He's nobody to mess with. And we may be a small little town here right now, but the people that work and intertwine with him are administrative people like the world's never seen before. And I'm just telling you, we got to be careful what we're endorsing in terms of free trade agreements. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Vokes. That's good. Councillor Bondi. Thank you, Chairman Walsh. I'm wondering if we table it to the next council meeting and we talk to our local representatives from the Agricultural Society about their positions on it. It's not going to hurt us to table it for two weeks. If council is willing. Council. Council. Okay, Councilor Bondi, you're tabling then? Or 
Council Rogers, you want to table that? Sure. Okay. And just need one person right. And we vote on that. Okay. So that's not voted on either. So, okay. It's tabled till next uh, meeting. Thank you. Uh, we are on to committee meeting minutes. Uh, we have uh, three sets of minutes there. Essex Accessibility Advisory Committee, the Coan Park Board, has two different dates, and Communities in Bloom from August. Councilor Rogers is adopting all three uh, committee's meeting minutes, supported by Councilor Snively. All in favor? It's carried. Uh, nothing under financial, nothing under new business, or do we? Yes. Do we? We have something under new business. And um, I'll pass that over to Councilor Bjorkman. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, all of us on Council received uh, a note from uh, Tamara Stomp this week uh, regarding a feasibility study to designate the western basin of Lake Erie as a national marine conservation area. The proposed marine park would include Point Pelee National Park, the eight islands of the township of Pelee, the waters of Pigeon Bay, which extend offshore of Essex at Colchester, Kingsville, Leamington to Amherstburg. There was a study completed in 1997 which identified the western basin of Lake Erie as an area of particular significance that would qualify for such designation, and for many reasons, but also to ensure attention to water quality. And as we're all aware, lo local water quality off the shores of Windsor and Essex County remain of great concern. Um, the letters of support they've already received are from the Western State Erie National Marine Conservation Area proposal, Tracy Ramsey MP, Dave Van Kestren MPP, Taras Natashak MPP, John Patterson, Mayor of Leamington, Nelson Santos, Mayor of Kingsville, Richard Weimuth from IRCA, Dr. David Suzuki, and the Water uh, Brothers. So what we'd like to do tonight is uh, pass a motion by our council to provide a letter of support uh, that can simply state support for the undertaking of a feasibility study by Parks Canada to designate the western basin of Lake Erie as a national marine conservation area. Now there were a lot of questions that had been brought forward to the committee when they we're bringing this forward, and many of the frequently asked questions were, is this going to change how we use the Western Basin? Does this anything, does it do anything to fishing? Does it do anything to boating? Does it do anything to the, the things that we carry on right now? And the answer to that is no. But it will restrict um, future development, may I say, uh, of the waterbed and the, the, the lake. So all of that then would need to be uh, critiqued by by this body so it, it's a way to protect it and a way to protect our water source so I uh, I would like to make that motion uh, that we use the uh, template that was sent in the letter uh, to uh, receive and support uh, this uh, attempt to get the uh, conservation so moved by Councillor Bjorkman supported by Councillor Bondi uh, any further questions or clarifications Councillor Rogers Uh, I think another thing that it would uh, restrict would be the uh, use of wind turbines or the placement of wind turbines in, in that uh, portion of the lake. And that would be a very good thing. Okay, any further comments, questions? All in favor of that motion, carried unanimously. No, under notice is a motion uh, from Councillor Bondi. Is this first one the one that you wanted to pass? No. This is in regard to Harrow Junior School, and I will pass that over to Councillor Bondi. Oh, uh, yes, okay. We Seconded by Councillor Vokes. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Just looking to see, and we got it, we touched on it a little bit tonight. We got some dates of when the, the study is coming forward from Harrow, but there's some rumors going on around in Harrow, and I don't like to run with the rumors. I, I would like to have clarification here from administration. And what the rumors are is, is what I'm hearing is that around the junior school property, there's a lot of issues with the storm sewers and the sanitary sewers. So I think rather than wait another year and a half, it's good information for us to have. That area must get developed at some point, hopefully sooner rather than later. So collectively as a council, if we have information, if the candidates out there have information, the candidates can hit the ground running when the new council is elected and we can know what we're dealing with because that property is hours and hours of complaints for myself 
and for our bylaw department, spending cleaning up that property. So rather than opening up a can of worms, it would be really nice to know a little bit about what's coming to us so that people on council or candidates running for council can know what they're going to see in the 2019-2020 budget. If there's something we can control, if it's going to take $100,000 to develop that property to fix all of the stormwater or sanitary sewers, then it would be nice to know and we, I'm not saying we have that number. We may not have that number. We may not have a whole lot of information right now, but I don't want to go with what the rumor is. So I've asked council to have some clarification so that all of us are not dealing with just rumors. Any comments or questions? Councilor Snively. Through you, Deputy Mayor. <clears throat> We did have a developer that was interested in that property and there was an offer that was presented and accepted with a condition in it. But uh, what happened was they backed out for that, that simple reason right there. Not a simple reason, that's a serious uh, situation where maybe Chris can update us on this if, uh, if he could about the, uh, the uh, sewer system there. It's not upgraded yet. So I think that had a lot to do with these people backing out if I'm right or wrong there. Mr. Nepsey? Yeah, through your, through your uh, chair. Um, I did talk to that same developer. That, that wasn't the explicit reason um, for not proceeding. It ended up just being uh, not enough money uh, for the amount of work that was uh, um, for that development. So um, are there stormwater improvements to be made there? Absolutely. Uh, as far as sanitary issues, that's something new. Uh, I think with respect to uh, Stantec and the, the team being in there now modeling and looking for improvements, that is, that is one of the areas um, we would look at uh, making improvements on. It's something that we've discussed since that uh, developer and development have come in and, and now left. Is, is there an opportunity for the, for the, you know, the town to improve not the stormwater on site, but the, the outlet, the stormwater, um, where that stormwater water would be going into. So that outlet, which is municipal infrastructure, is an, op an opportunity to improve that. Yes, so that's something we're looking at in the, in the 2019 budget. Uh, I would hesitate. I'm trying to wait. You know, it's kind of the chicken before the egg uh, with respect to getting that model and that data, right? I like working off of the data and making sure what uh, being suggested to improve there makes sense uh, for the entire community. So uh, in, in, I guess, directly answering you, yes, there are storm sewer improvements to be made in that area. Okay, any further questions? So the motion here is? Thank you, Mr. Chair. The motion is just to have a conversation because I can't figure out how else to have a motion, have a conversation with my council colleagues about issues. So that's how I have to do it. So the motion can be rescinded, I guess. That's all. I have no other mechanism, so I do what I can. Okay. Yeah. Here's the update. So uh, I guess the motion is to receive uh, the verbal update from administration. Okay. Uh, support from Council. Did I already have a support? Yeah. Oh, Councillor Volk's already supported that. Thank you. So all in favor of that motion. It's carried. Thank you. Uh, item 15.1.2, Councillor Bonnie has asked to uh, have that moved to October 1st. And uh, she has another notice of motion that was added to the agenda earlier. Yes. Thank you, Chair Mosh. a second on the... Oh, it's just a notice oh, of motion. Just, okay, thank you. Yes. Thank you, Chair Malosh. Uh, that administration investigated an option of adding a retail revitalization grant to our CIP programs. And that's it. Yeah, I will send it to you. There was an article in the Windsor Star. Give me the idea. Thank you, Councillor Bondi. Sounds interesting. Okay, so we have uh, reports and announcements from council members. I'll start to my far left. I'll start with Councillor Bjorkman. Thanks, Councillor Bjorkman. Councillor Vokes. And, and I know my colleagues on council have seen this. I know I've talked to administration about it. And I'm just wondering where it's going. And I was left with the impression that the representative was going to be here tonight. He's not here. And that's in terms of 
of Highway 3 and County Road 8 where a person, I'll just I'll identify him as a person because I really don't know who he is or what he represents, walked into a development area and started developing the land without no endorsement of the town of Essex. Brought loads and loads and loads of gravel. Councilor Vokes, Councilor yes. Vokes, I have to interrupt you. Sure. This is not for um, topics. No, but it's, some, it's, it's council it's updates. An, it's I've announcements. Been working on it. I've been working on it. It's what it's about. Council updates is in terms of what council's been doing. Okay, so give us the update, I guess. The update is this. They're putting sheds in there, and they got no respect for our planning department of the town of Essex. they got to take them out of there until they go they got to back the bus up they got to work with their planning department they got to respect Rita they got to respect Jeff and then move forward they just went in there developed the land dropped the sheds in and put their for sale signs up nobody in the town of Essex even knew what they were doing and that's as true as I'm sitting here no respect and they're not here tonight but no respect for our planning department this council or the corporation of the town of Essex so whoever those people are I'm requesting and I'm hoping council would support as a business day tomorrow, they pack up their game and they move it out of town until they, they recognize our procedures and processes. It's deplorable what they did to our planning department. I don't know who they think they are, but I think I'll just go dump some gravel tomorrow somewhere in the town of Essex, maybe on the ball diamond or something, just open up a business up. What the hell? Because he's doing it. Councilor Vogt, can uh, we have Mr. Nepsey give you an update on, or give us all an update? Oh, sorry, we can't. Because this is announcement only. It's just, it's not about reports. So, okay. So, so that's Thank all you. I'm asking. I'm okay. just asking that that person's identified to move everything out of there until they get full endorsement of the planning department, council, and administration to proceed. Okay. Thank you very much. Why have a planning department if you can just put whatever you want up wherever you want? I think we all agree on that. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, and my, my last issue is... Uh, in terms of to Mr. OJ was the and and I know you've been really really busy Rob with with the election and 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 shall too but did we ever get a chance to send that letter to the health minister in terms of our deplorable conditions in our emergency rooms and if not I understand why we haven't I've never seen so many emails go to any given department as what as lately that's why you got to take that word reports so. out you got to take that word reports so. out uh, through you, Mr. Chair, I, I will check to ensure, but I believe it did go out to the new minister, uh, to the uh, yeah. and, and whose name uh, escapes me yeah. at the moment. I apologize, but okay, uh, no, no, I, I no, 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 no. Please don't apologize because I, I've seen what you've been going through, and I get it. I do, Rob, and Shelley too, and and I appreciate your patience and everything. So, so if we can put that on the whiteboard somewhere, and if it keeps dropping down, it keeps dropping down. But I, I just want to make sure we stay on top of that, if we could. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Volks, and I'll move over to Councillor Rogers. Thank you, Councillor Rogers. Councillor Snively. Thanks, Councillor Snively. Councillor Bondi. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Just a, just a note, when letters go out to people, I think we're supposed to get them. We're supposed to get them either by email or back on our agenda. So when we get that, that'll be confirmation to me that that letter has gone out, because that's something that I think we initiated as a council. Another thing, there's a lot of attention going on at municipal elections, but I think some of us, we need to stop and think about school board trustee elections. They're coming up. I was a little irritated this past week when I read in the paper, public board announces LaSalle uh, land purchase for a new school. I just want to throw the question out there. The question that all of us need to be asking in our Harrow community is where's our high school in Kingsville? When is that shovel going in the ground? And I know we can't talk about it as a council, but it's certainly a hot topic in Harrow. And, you know, whatever happens with the high school property is, is whatever happens there. But uh, our students deserve that new school that we were promised. We've lost two schools. And over this past summer, those two schools have took up countless hours of my time with complaints for property standards, long grass, and enough is enough. So school board trustees, I want to call out to you, my trustees that are running in the election, where's our school? Thank you, Councillor Bondi. And uh, it comes down to me. I only have one announcement to make, and that is about the McGregor mug, mug run. And that's going to happen on um, this coming Saturday. Uh, it's also a race and, uh, a, and a beer fest at the same time. Uh, so it starts off with a race in the afternoon. Uh, the, so there'll be some road closures in the uh, McGregor area. 
It's uh, happening at Coan Park, and you can either be in a 10 kilometer or a 5 kilometer or a walk. The money raised will go to some, I'm, to be honest with you, I don't know what it's going to this year, but it's always gone to a very um, good charity, and I'm sure it will again uh, something in the community uh, this year as well. So it's this Saturday, September 22nd. There's some excellent um, bands playing in the evening as well. And uh, we hope you come out and support the McGregor Mug Run. This is the seventh annual. Thank you. Councillor Bjorkman, did you want to mention something there too? Yeah, I'd like to rescind my pass. Uh, I was supposed to mention the uh, Essex Centre BIA is hosting the Fall Into, fall into Local uh, this Friday from 4 to 7 downtown. The main street will be closed down again. Uh, Rio Michaels Band will be playing once again. And uh, of a lot of vendors and stuff out on the street, food, and uh, come on out, enjoy yourselves, and visit downtown Essex Center. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Bjorkman. And um, last but not least, I'm going to ask our student, uh, student counselor, uh, Ava Hoffman, if she has anything that she wants to announce. Sorry? Did I ask you? Well, that was business. This is, this is events. I'm going to give her another opportunity. Thank you. Um, we're into... <laughs> so we are now into bylaws, and I'm going to pass it over to our clerk, Robert O'Shea. Under 17.1.1, bylaw 1748, the confirming bylaw for third and final reading. Moved by Councillor Vokes, supported by Councillor Bondi. All in favor? That's carried. Bylaw 1749 for the declaration of surplus lands for two readings this evening. Moved by Councillor Snively, supported by Councillor Bjorkman. All in favor? It's carried. And 1748, the confirming bylaw from the proceedings of this September 17th regular meeting for two readings. Moved by Councillor Rogers, supported by Councillor Bjorkman. All in favor? That is carried.